Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our 20th session of the John Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist Free Four Movement. Tonight, uh, I would like to share with you some of the points uh, before or prior to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why I'm here in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I do believe that beside a good lunch, good supper, and good uh, breakfast, you have a higher calling and a higher mission that you are here, right? So we came here to understand the seriousness of our time. We Seventh-day Adventists, Reformed Thai people, we are coming here to join our forces to be ready for the final call of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ on the clouds of heaven. Today, I would like to uh, share with you this very important statement, Mission in Action. And I would like to quote uh, Martin Luther King Jr. saying, at the end, we will remember not the, uh, the word of our enemies by the silence of our friends. In that respect, I would like to give honor to the most translated author of all times. Her name is Ellen G. White. I regard Ellen G. White as a United States citizen, the greatest uh, person that was ever translated in the world beside the Bible. Her statement is, it is too late in the day to feed with milk. If souls of mouth uh, or two, old in truth, who are about to enter the time of trouble such as never before, was before, um, cannot hear the straight truth or endure the strong meat of the righteousness of the way, or straightness of the way, how will they stand in the day of the battle? So brothers and sisters, we are right at the edge of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's why it is my privilege to introduce you, uh, America the Beautiful. Uh, basically, when I, because we have to Praise the Lord for the fact that we do have a privilege to organize such a, a conference, such a spiritual conference in United States of America. When I talk about America, I want to say that this is the greatest nation of, of the world. And the greatness and the might and the strength of United States of America is related to the Bible. Those who are serious with history, they must relate the birth of this mighty nation and the Bible. You cannot dismiss when you say America, you say the Bible. When you say the Bible, you say America. That's why, brothers and sisters, friends and visitors, in all the hotels, in all the motels, everywhere in America, you find in that room where you want to sleep two things, a plasma TV, and the Gideon's Bible. And the world divides in two, basically. When people are coming with the bags in the hotel, they drop the bags and they choose. They choose to take the remote control to see 150 channels in the plasma TV, or they are going to choose to shut down, turn off the TV, and open the Gideon's Bible. That's why America is so precious, so beautiful, because America committed the Bible in the hands of millions and millions of people around the world. Today, I want to say that America is a uh, society with the greatest enactment that is called United States of America Constitution. The United States of American Constitution is the greatest enactment ever transferred or offered to the world. That's why America is a republic. And I, you can see uh, the World Trade Center, I deeply regret, and I, a couple of days ago we had this uh, momentum when over 3,000 people, innocent people died in World Trade Center or Twin Towers in United States. And I do believe that the blood of these 3,000 people will be, was shed for the, pr for the price, with the price, with the intent of freedom, an expression of constitution that guarantees what? A religion without popes and a society 
without kings. United States of America was, is, and probably will be for a little short, a country that guarantees the freedom of conscience, guarantees the, 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 the freedom of expression. We do not need dictators, neither in political world or social world, neither in religious world. A United States of America stays yet the most, the greatest nation of the world because we do have a constitution that guarantees a religion without popes and a society without kings. My dear friends, uh, today is September 13, 2015, and it's a beautiful day of Sunday. And uh, I would like to say that in this Sunday, I would like to say that 7.2 billion people see sun every day every day. 7.2 billion people are worshiping in the day of the sun. What people do today? And I believe that everybody, each one of us, loves sunshine. How many of you love sun? Oh, I love sun. Sunshine, it's beautiful. Exposure to sunshine is extraordinary privilege. And you know, I do believe that everybody is in love with sun. That's why we have 7.2 billion worshiping uh, rejoicing in the day of the sun. That's why I would like to go a little bit farther. Uh, in this context, I want to say that great ancient civilizations are bringing uh, their desire and their passion to worship the sun. Babylonians, they were worshiping the sun. Sun being the only visible object on the sky. And definitely people think, uh, thought, man, if sun is so good, you know, we have to worship them, uh, worship it as a, as a god. And then uh, you can go to the Persians and to the Egyptians. You go, the Greeks took that worshiping to the sun, you know, and they gave to the Romans. Romans were worshiping the sun as well. Uh, even the king, um, uh, I have a statement, uh, uh, one of the most extraordinary statements uh, you see here. It's a coin of Constantine the Great. He was so much in love with the sun. I said, we must, we must make a coin, an, an imperial coin where you have Basilicus Solis et Lune, Constantinum. On every single imperial coil, Constantine the Great designed two things, a sun and a moon. They were worshiping the sun and the moon. Even the emperor, Constantine the Great, was considered the incarnation or reincarna incarnation of sun, the God. You see, sun, it's a beautiful thing, object created by God. It looks like we, humanity, went so far far to worship sun. Even the Christian world after the collapse of Roman Empire, Constantine the Great gave that uh, baton to the popes and the popes took all the prerogatives of the Caesars, all the Pontifes Maximus, uh, priest and the king. These are privileges of an emperor and the popes took that on and then you have uh, Constantine the Great having even a decree for 300, almost 400 years after the death of Christ. Christianity was still worshiping the seventh day of the week, which is according to the statement of the, B the Bible in the book of Genesis chapter 2, respective, uh, respectful, uh, respecting uh, the law of God in uh, the book of Exodus chapter 20. But uh, Constantine the Great was so amazed by the beauty of the sun that he made a decree and he said, everybody should worship in the day of the sun. And here we are. 7.2 billion people in the world is worshiping the day of the sun or Sunday, if you wish. Later on, even the popes, the Christian world that has been erected on the ruins of the collapse of Roman Empire was so amazed by the beauty of the sun that the entire architecture of the Christian civilization is based on the cold of sun. Uh, I was born in Europe, uh, just to give you a feedback. And I do believe, I love Europe, by the way. And um, uh, my dear friends, I want to say that one of the most beautiful cities, the most extraordinary cities that you can find in Europe, and you have all the countries beautiful designed, but one of the greatest countries, one of the greatest places where you can admire uh, ancient elements, history, and architecture is Rome. And if I have to go 
deeper in Rome, you will find the smallest yet the greatest state that controls the affairs, uh, political, religious, and social affairs of the world. The smallest state, the greatest power. It's called Vatican. When I went to Roman Piazza for the first time in my life in 2002 or 2003, I was mesmerized by the beauty of Roman Plaza, which you see here. It's all the symbol of the sun. You see the, the, the symbol of sun. You can see the same thing on the, on the Constantine's coins. You can go farther. Uh, we have a, 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 if you go to have a pilgrimage of the Christian civilization, you see here the sun sun and the moon again. You see even the bread that we, we take from uh, uh, Eucharist or Holy Communion. Or it's the symbol of sun. We are. People are in love with sun. You can go even farther. This is one of the greatest uh, symbols. Uh, how many? We are in North America. I want to tell you that the greatest, um, um, the greatest church or the greatest, uh, yes, uh, edifice in America is uh, the uh, uh, St. Joseph Basilica. You heard about St. Joseph Basilica. It's in Montreal. And uh, when you go there, it's in top of the hill. It's beautiful. The greatest, the biggest cathedral in North America. And when I went there, I took this beautiful picture. What do you see here? The sun, everybody worships the sun and the moon as well. And you can go farther even when you have to deal with incoronation of the popes. You see here, you see on the, on the left side hand of his glove, you see sun. And guess what is written in the middle? Solis means sun. So you see, my dear friends, we are living in a world where people worship a day that comes from ancient civilization. Doesn't come from the Bible, it comes from the love and passion that people have to worship a visible object, the most lightning, extraordinary shining object on the, on, the, on the sky. It is the sun. If we can go a little bit farther, I would like to stop. Uh, even though people are so amazed and so desirable to worship sun, I think that everybody heard about uh, global warming. How many of you heard about global warming? Did you hear about global warming in your countries? It looks like this sun that we see on the sky, we worship sun. And still the sun uh, looks like he's not behaving in a friendly manner to us. The sun is beating us more and more. We don't have rain and uh, all the nations are outrageous saying, Son, if we worship you as a God, why you are so tough with us? Why you are coming to, to give us so much heat that the rain is away from us? So people are thinking that global warming is an issue. Uh, people are not worshiping on a Sunday properly, so we need a decree to kick in all the 7.2 billion people to worship the sun. Maybe the sun will depart from us and will give us more rain. Now, I would like to tell you, brothers and sisters and friends, in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse uh, 5, that Solomon saw something very interesting. I don't know exactly if you have that in your Bibles. There is an evil. There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, an error which proceeded from the ruler. What evil can be under the sun? What evil can be under, beneath the sun? The evil comes from the concept that fully is set, fully is set uh, on, uh, fully is set in great dignity, and the rich sit on the low place. You see, it's it's a foolish idea to worship the sun, and it's a foolish idea to put people that are worshiping true God to treat them like slaves. Now, I would like to go a little bit farther and to see Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. Uh, the Lord God, the one that has created the entire world and the universe, is giving us a warning. Don't worship sun, moon, stars. Is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 19. And lest thou lift up thy eyes unto heaven, and when thou see the sun, and the moon, and the stars, and all the host of heaven, and he says, should not be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God had divided unto all, uh, all the nations under the whole world. So what God, the mighty creator, says, when you look to the moon, when you look to the stars, when you look to the sun, don't create a day. Don't create a decree 
to worship the sun, the moon, and the stars, because this will be, at the end, an iniquity and an abomination. I would like to go to the book of Job, next step. You know, in chapter 31... Job is the one that counts his sins according to the, uh, to the, the weight, the gravity, the greatness of, I mean, the, 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 the severity of these sins. And in chapter 31, I found the word if. You know how many times? 16 times. If I did commit this sin. If I did commit that sin, and he starts on and on and on, and he reaches one of the, the stages in his enumeration of sins where he says, if I committed adultery, if I took the bread from the hands of the widow, if I neglected the orphan, and so on and so forth. But up to a certain stage, in 16 times calling, if I did this, if I did that, Job says something very important. If I beheld the sun when it shined or, or the moon walking in brightness and my heart had been secretly enticed or my mouth had kissed my hand, what does he says? This also were an iniquity to be punished by the judge for I should deny the God that is above. So do you see what uh, Jacob, uh, Job says? That if I'm looking to the sun and I create a day calling Sunday and I'm going to worship in that Sunday and I'm going to worship that moon day. We have a Monday. Yes, moon day. This is an iniquity. is a transgression of the Ten Commandments. So that's why, my dear friends, Job is one of the greatest heroes of the scripture. Yet he declares that worshiping sun instead of the creator from above, it's a transgression of the law of God and of the Ten Commandments. And by the way, in the book of uh, Amos chapter in the book of Amos chapter 8 verse 9, God gets in the picture and says, To all of you 7.2 billion people in the world, if you are going to worship the sun, I'm going to get in a picture at the end of the history of the world and I can prove that I am above the sun that you worship. And look what this Bible verse says. And it shall come to pass in that day. I stop here. My dear friends, any time when you do a severe, deep, profound Bible study in a scripture regarding the at that day, in that day, all the time when you say or you see in the scripture in that day, you talk about the end of the world, the terminus point, the last moment of the history of this world. And here is Amos saying, in that day, says the Lord, I will cause the sun to go down at noon and darken, darken the earth in the clear day. Why does God, our Jesus, our creator, does to turn the sun? The, the planet upside down. North becomes south. South becomes north. Why God, the almighty creator, is coming to put the sun in darkness? To show the world the vanity of worshiping a religious, uh, or worshiping a God according to a tradition that is non-biblical and is against the rule of God. Uh, I would like to stop a little uh, bit uh, to talk about one. The Pope is the most important and influential man in the world. Do you agree with that? And, and, uh, and I, I have to admit, uh, His Highness travels all over the world. And I found out that the Pope is very, really interested in global warming. Did you hear about that? So he tried to fix the global warming. Warming, I'm sorry. He tried to bring everybody in the church to make sure that relationship between 7.2 billion population and the sun will be good. So let's negotiate. We get to worship in the Sunday. We will flock in in the churches in the Sunday. And you, son, be merciful unto us. Withdraw a little bit and give us rain. But, uh, you know, my dear friends, I want to tell you something. There was a global warning, uh, a warming in the Old Testament. I'm going to get there and you will see how humanity shifts the blame. You know, when we have calamities in the world, 
You know what is the problem? The problem is not the calamity. The problem is who is guilty for that calamity. And woe unto us if we will not know the time of our visitation because God is coming to search our hearts and our, uh, in our lives. Now, let me see the next statement. Uh, one of the greatest, the latest report from Rome, uh, His Highness uh, Pope, jo uh, the, uh, Pope Francis makes a statement. On Sunday, our participation in the Eucharist has special importance. Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationship with God, with ourselves, with others, and with the world. This is the newest statement that you can, can find in his encyclical. Now, I would like to point, because the language that he uses is very profound, and you have to understand the expression God means something else that you think of. So, which God? When he talks about God, let me tell you to define the word God in his encyclical. I am in all above all, so God himself, I, and the vicar of God, had both one consistory. Consistory, consistory. And I am able to do almost all that God can do. This is a statement. So then, look at this. Wherefore, if those things that I do be said not be done of men, but of God, what do you make of me but a God? So now, brothers and sisters, when he, te he tells you about coming back to this on the Sunday, our participation to Eucharist, Sunday, and so on and so forth, this will heal our relationship with God. Which God? He is God. This is what he says. So if you want to re heal your relationship with God, the Pope, quote unquote, you have to keep the Sunday. And that's why I think that uh, his visit in Philadelphia, it, it is coming to a, 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 a proposal that uh, we have to consider this. Uh, and one of the statements regarding us is this uh, uh, next slide. Maybe it's time to ask ourselves, Pope Francis says, ourselves if working on Sunday is through freedom. Maybe it's, it's time to ask ourselves if working for, on Sunday is true freedom. And now I would like to tell you to go deeper in the subject. This is not uh, milk. This is deep uh, study in the Word of God. And if we don't have the courage to stand the test of time and to pray to the Lord to give us the Holy Spirit, we are going to lose the fight. Because this is a fight that has supernatural connotation. And we as dust, we are not ready. Confront, to, to be confronted with the supernatural. We need a supernatural power. We need a supernatural shield, which is the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So let's go farther. Uh, another statement of his is that let us join the forces. He wants to combat. You see, he uses a term combat, meaning that those who refuse to join forces will, will, will be anatomized or put aside. And by the way, one of the statements brings all religions together. This is the intent. All 7.2 billion population must join their forces under one God, which is God the Pope. And by the way, I think that this is a very, very serious matter when you call someone, someone that is a man, Holy Father. Wow, that takes courage and blasphemy. Because I do really believe there is no other name given under the heaven, on the earth, and beneath the earth, but the name of Jesus Christ that we shall kneel down and worship. Now, another statement, just be ready. This is very, very important for you. Uh, fundamentalism. This is the way that the people are described that are Christian Bible believers, please, this is a dictionary. A movement, what is fundamentalist? You, are a funda you heard about that in TV? Oh, this fundamentalist did that. This fundamentalist did that. Look at this. A movement in 20th century Protestantism emph emphasizing the literal Bible as a fundamental to Christian's life and teaching. The belief of a movement. A movement or attitude stressing strict and literal adherence to a set of basic principles. So in other words, if you believe your Bible, if you stick with your Christ of the Scripture, if you stick with your uh, Ten Commandments, with your, uh, the law of God, you are going to be registered in the records of the New World 
order as a fundamentalist. So, brothers and sisters, it's time of the end. Those, uh, Ellen G. White, uh, prophet of God, 150 years ago, says, to stand in defense of truth, and righteousness when the majority forsake us to fight the battles of the Lord when champions are few this will be our test brothers and sisters my personal impression is that we eat too much we sleep too much we sing too much and we study and pray less that's the weakness of the people of God now Global warming on the time of Elijah. There was a time when we had a hit. Now California is in fire right now. We have a severe drought there. In the time of Elijah, three years and a half, there was no rain. And there was a king, Ahab, that was blaming. Who is guilty? Who is guilty? Who is guilty? Because there is no rain in the country for three years and a half. And they found the bad man, the bad man. And the bad man, quote and quote, is Elijah. And when Ahab meets Elijah, he says, Are you the one that, uh, that troubles Israel? Are you the one that destroys Israel? And Elijah says, No, 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 don't shift the blame on me. You have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast worshipped Baal. Uh, I want to say that Baalim is the sun god. You know, Baal means round. So even at a time, the people of Israel, those who are keeping the Ten Commandments, they were ten, ten, had that tendency to worship the sun. And Elijah told them, listen, you worship the sun, you have the drought. The, the Lord says in, um, in one of the, of the statements, that Ecclesiastes chapter uh, 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of all matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, that this is the duty of all men. Pope is a man too. I am a man too. Any minister, preacher, uh, reverend, any guru, any whatever, uh, a religious individual is a human being, and that's under the jurisdiction of the Ten Commandments of the law of God. He have forsaken the commandments of God and worship Balaam. I want to go a little bit farther, and I want to say that at the last, the great conflict, the great conflict will be done in between a minority and majority, brothers and sisters, and the mathematics of God gives you courage, because one man plus God equals majority, amen? So don't start to count how many people are on your side. No, don't do that fatal mistake to see, to look around how many are with me first. No, no, don't do that mistake. You make sure that on your right side hand is your mighty Savior, Jesus Christ, of whose name is irreplaceable and unique is the name of Jesus Christ. Make sure that you plus God equals majority. Let, go, let me go in the book of Jeremiah. Uh, why is no rain? This is God's version about global warming. You know, you want to know why global warming? Let me tell you. And now God speaks, not the Pope. Your iniquity have turned away these things, meaning raining in time. Your sins have withhold good things from you. You know, ye shall defile also the covering of the grave images, silver mortal images. Get the idol out of your heart. And then the Lord says, then shall... Give he rain. So why is not raining uh, on the planet earth? Why do we have a, a severe drought? Because of our sins, brothers and sisters. But tidings now, I want to uh, go to the point of, um, of mission in action. You know, there, the mission of the Lord is one thing, but the action of the Antichrist, the action of those mighty in power, Right now, they are going to destroy the people of God. Look at this, uh, uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 44. But tidings, meaning, but news out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Him whom? The one that pretends to be God. Shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly make away many. Now, this is the mission of the, uh, the action of destruction of the people of God. What is our mission? Brothers and sisters, it's not enough to know these things. Matthew 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all world as a witness and to all nations. And then shall what? The end come. So you have two majestic Bible verses. One is the mission of the people of God. Matthew 24, verse 14. When this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. And then the Antichrist action against the mission of the people of God. Destroy them all. 
but the Lord is perfect. And a perfect crime requires the perfect storm that is coming. Let's read Jeremiah chapter uh, uh, 25, verse 31. A noise shall come even to the ends of the earth, for the Lord has a controversy with whom? With the nations. And what the nations do, he will plead with all flesh. And then he says, thus says the Lord of hosts, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great weird shall be rise, the storm. So what does the evil do in the planet Earth? Goes from nation one to nation two. How are these nations, brothers and sisters? They are united. All the nations are united unto evil. And now the Lord says, I'm going to bring you the perfect storm. Maranatha, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, the one that we love and we desire. What's wrong, I said? We have this problem. The Ten Commandments will be the debatable issue of the entire world. Expect that in media. Expect that in TV, newspapers, books, all over. Churches, uh, atheists, Buddhists, uh, Hindus, Christians, non-Christians. Everybody will decide if we should worship the sun or we should worship the one that is above the sun as his creator. I would like to go a little bit farther in this context and I would like to read a, a mega statement from the book of Luke chapter 4 verse 16. And uh, look at this statement. And Jesus Christ, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up as his custom. As his tradition, Jesus went into the synagogue and he worshipped God, his, uh, his, his Father, in the Sabbath day. Jesus, God, the Son of Man, worshipped God in the Sabbath day. Now, uh, there is a, a Harry Lubeck, uh, American humanist, brothers and sisters. He makes a point uh, uh, that the terminus moment for the planet Earth is the one, the warning point is in history is the one, the moment that man becomes aware that the only God is man himself. And I think that we are dealing now with someone who claims the power of divinity on the planet Earth. And I would like to give you some statements in that respect. The Pope, which is a man, like me and like you, uh, has a decree. Hence the Pope is crowned with a triple crown as a king of heaven and of earth and the lower regions. You know, the triple crown is the king of heaven, earth, and lower regions. So if someone see a triple crown in the head of the, uh, 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 a pope in the history, you have to wonder why. The why is that you are a king in heaven, you have a crown. You are a king on the earth, you are, have a crown. You are a king on lower uh, regions, you have a crown. So you have, the pope has the triple crown, is the, uh, the, the, the king of heaven on earth and beneath the earth. Now, the only problem is that uh, Philippians chapter 2, verse 10, says the only one who has the right to wear a triple crown is Jesus Christ. Look what God the Father says to Apostle Paul. That in the name of Jesus, every knee should bow down on things on heaven, on things on the earth, on things of, uh, of the earth. Uh, so you have heaven, earth, and beneath the earth. So who is the one authorized by God the Father to wear a triple crown? Jesus Christ. He is the king of heaven, he is the king of the earth, and he is the king of the lower regions. Jesus Christ, by the way, have you ever heard about the Pope dying on the cross for 7.2 million billion people? But I heard about that Jesus Christ, the only divine son of God who came to pay a ransom for our salvation. I worship Jesus because he melt my heart with his love. Do you love Jesus? Look what is the reply of God in this respect. Let's read um, what Ellen G. White says. She saw the crowns in vision of, of Jesus Christ. Upon his head were many crowns. Crown within a crown. It's an amazing statement where Ellen G. White recognized that he has more than one crown when the Lord is coming. Let me go to the point where, uh, where um, uh, the Lord speaks. Thus says the Lord God, remove diadem and take off the crown, that it shall be same. Exalt that is low and uh, 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 um, elevate the one, uh, abase him that is high. Look, uh, let's have uh, this uh, decision of, of dilemma. Jesus or the Pope, who can wear this triple crown based on the biblical version? And let me read this once again. Exalt him that is low and abase him that is in high. You see what happens when the Lord Jesus Christ comes? 
You, need, you see, that news that Jesus Christ is coming soon terrifies the Antichrist, brothers and sisters. Because the Antichrist will be abased and the one that is low, Jesus Christ, will be elevated. And I want to say, uh, Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 26 says, God speaks, I will overturn, overturn, overturn. How many times? Three times. How many crowns? Three crowns. Let me go farther. Because thy heart is lifted up and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the midst of the seas. Yet you, uh, thou art men and not God. Thou that set thy heart as the heart of God, thy shall bring th th they shall bring thee down on the pit. And thou shalt die uh, the death of that that are slain in the midst of seas. So this is the answer of God. An answer of Jesus Christ when he comes. He finishes the Antichrist. Brothers and sisters, I love Jesus. And I love 7.2 billion people in the world. We have a mission. You have a mission to invite people to worship the real God, the Father, Jesus Christ. And uh, through the intercession of the Holy Spirit in our minds and our hearts. Now let me go farther. Will you say before him that slay you, I am a God, but thou shalt be a man and not God, in the hand of him that slay thee? You know, thou shalt die of the death of uncircumcised by the hand of the stranger, for I have spoken, saith the Lord. So, God is almighty and powerful. Now, my dear friends, if we have such a mighty God on our hand, do you, on our right side hand, do you agree that one man plus God equals majority? Yes or no? Let me share a statement. The seventh wonder of the world. How many of Brazilians, people that are coming from Brazil, this is the seventh. Jesus Redentor, no? Jesus Redentor, or how is that? Uh, Jesus Christ, the, 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 re, the, the Redeemer. It's an amazing, I was there, I had a pleasure to, to go to visit this beautiful architecture. And guess what? I have a few minutes, five minutes left, I guess. Uh, brothers and sisters, it's interesting to see. You can hear in top of this, uh, of this uh, Copacabana, I guess. It's in top of the mountain, Rio de Janeiro. You can hear all kinds of languages in the world. People are coming from all, in, uh, from all corners of the world to take pictures with Jesus, the Redeemer. So you will see a lady with a high heel shoes. Uh, people uh, less dressed or, um, you know, they come and they say, you know, I am Jesus. My question is, brothers and sisters, if Jesus Christ, that big statue, will start move, how many will go to take picture with that Jesus? Honestly, how many will take pictures with that Jesus? Do you know, I conclude my statement because my time is over. I want to tell you something, brothers and sisters. In Desire of Ages, Jesus Christ is described by Ellen G. White. And Desire of Ages is worthy is the king jesus christ when he comes first time when he comes to redeem us when we go to open the gates of heaven uh, we uh, he says worthy worthy is the lamb and when we get to the uh, the, the kingdom of god in the country of that f uh, uh, tree of of uh, uh, life we will sing worthy 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 how many times worthy 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 how many times do the angels worship god holy 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 you know what Tonight, I let you with one question. I mean, three questions. A question that Jesus addressed to one of his disciples. Do you want to be a Peter? Do you want to be a Peter? Converted one. Peter, do you love me? Question number one. Yes, Lord, I love you. You are worthy. Peter, do you love me? Lord, you all know all things. You know that I love you. Worthy, worthy. Peter, do you? really love me and peter almost in tears says lord you know all things you know that i love you worthy 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 may the lord help us to be at that very moment at the final appeal when he's coming and to sing together the 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 the, the, the greatest song worthy 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 is the lamb of god